Few civilians have been inside the shelter where some 2,000 immigrant children are being held separately from their parents. Dr. Colleen Kraft is president of the American Academy of Pediatrics. She visited a Texas facility for children under the age of 12 after her colleagues called her and said, Dr. Kraft, you need to get down here and see for yourself what was happening. Dr. Colleen Kraft joins us. She said, just call me Colleen, but I'm going to call you Dr. Kraft. Tell okay. us, what did you see? I went into a shelter that was designed for very young children and walked into the toddler room and very different than when you normally see toddlers. They're usually running around and rambunctious. There were a number of very quiet children and there was one little girl who was just sobbing and wailing and beating her little fists on the mat and staff were next to what her. What was she saying? She was crying. She was under two years old. And Asking for her mother? What was she? She was just crying. Mm -hmm. She couldn't be comforted. The staff that was there were trying to give her books and toys, but they weren't allowed to hold her, and they weren't allowed to comfort her. And Is that a rule? You can't hold a crying child? I was told that you couldn't comfort or hold a crying child. Mm -hmm. And we all knew that this child was crying because she wanted her mother. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't give that to her. Mm -hmm. So you just observed? We just observed, yes. What are the physiological and psychological effects of what this has on the children? So when we look at what happens to the stress response in human beings and very young children, when we are stressed, we have increased levels of cortisol, of our fight and flight hormones, and normally that helps to protect us when there's a dangerous situation. In the instance where children are separated from their parents, the one buffer they have against these fight or flight chemicals is gone. And so these children are on red alert all the time. And they're not able to buffer these different hormones. And what this can do is disrupt the synapses and the neurological connections that are part of the developing brain. Can they recover from this kind of trauma? Is this long lasting trauma to the brain? This type of trauma can be long lasting. and it's difficult to recover from this. We know very young children who are exposed to this type of trauma go on to not develop their speech, not develop their language, not develop their gross and fine motor skills, and wind up with developmental delays. I've heard some describe this, and the, the, the rhetoric is very heated right now, the conversation is very heated, and I've heard some people describe this as a form of child abuse. Do you see it that way? It is a form of child abuse. And as much as I respect our president and the office of the presidency, I want to turn people's attention to a picture that I saw in the media about a week ago with the president's daughter and grandchild. Ivanka Trump. Yes, interacting with each other, yeah. yes. And if you look at this picture, you see the joy between parent and child. You see the child who is responding to their, ch their parent. You see that child's brain being built. Every one of our children in this world deserve that same relationship with their parents, that the same end, nurturing. At the end of the day, that is what, what I learned too, that is what all these parents want. It is, and this is what we know builds child health, builds development, builds up children, and this is what every parent wants with their child. It's what every child needs from their parent. You heard Chief Padilla saying, though, that some of the criminals are getting in with the children. When you separate a parent and child at the border and that child is crying for mommy, you probably don't have a human trafficker. All right, Dr. Kraft, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. For now, let's send it back to Alex in New York. Thanks, Gail. It is, it is so important to underscore and for help, to help us all understand what the immediate and long-term health effects of this trauma are on these children who are increasingly younger and younger and younger as a result of these separations, babies and toddlers. Well, let's put a finer point of that on that, which is that of the 2,000 children reported by the HHS that are being separated from their families, there are about 100 that are under the age of four. Yeah. And the care that they may or may not be receiving without a parent there, I think, is exactly what Dr. Kraft is talking about, who's the head of the American Academy of, of Pediatrics. And we should just note there are two groups here. There are the kids who come unaccompanied, and then there is this new policy, which is the children that come with their parents that are being separated, and that's what we're talking about, just to keep people clear on the different yeah. camps here. They are being rendered unaccompanied minors. 